Okay, folks, this is going to be a video review from Marco Polo, which was a new series released on Netflix today, being the 12th of December 2014. I'm not entirely sure about the format, whether I'm going to change it up in the future. It's all in the air at the moment. For now, I'm going to tell you what I liked about the first episode of this series, which is a Netflix exclusive original series. One of many, actually, the number that they have done in recent months and years has expanded massively. I mean, you got Game of Cards. Game of Cards? <laughs> House of Cards. It's like a splicing between Game of Thrones and House of Cards, right? People are being beheaded and murdered during dinner in the Oval Office, then maybe that's what Game of Cards looks like. I'm not entirely sure. This series is interesting. What I'm going to talk about is what I liked about the series. I'm, going to, I'm not going to give any plot points away because I think that it's a little early. It's a little early. I don't know how popular this series is going to be and I don't want to ruin it for anyone. So what I'm simply going to do is tell you what I like about the setting the characters, um, the cinematography particularly, puts a great emphasis on, on these very um, beautiful establishing shots. Clearly the people that made it wanted to communicate to the audience the diversity of the settings, the grandeur and scale of the Mongolian Empire in the 12th century or 13th century. And this is, I know a bit about history, this is the sort of third generation of the Mongolian Empire's leadership. They've become far more decadent, far more sophisticated, and far more multicultural since the days of uh, Temujin, or Genghis Khan himself, or Genghis Khan, depending on which way you like to pronounce it. So Marco Polo is a Venetian trader's son who finds himself really imprisoned, sort of imprisoned, but a kind of honored guest that's not necessarily allowed to leave the service of the great Khan himself. So Kublai Khan cuts a deal with his father, and he must remain in Kublai's court. Now, I wouldn't call that spoiler because, I mean, it's a, it's factually based and it's a story that's damn near 800 years old. For those of you who are not aware of Marco Polo, he was a real guy. And I think that's very interesting. I like the, the fact that they've really tried to, 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 to communicate to the audience how multicultural um, and decadent the Mongolian Empire had become by this point. By the reign of Kublai Khan, there were Chinese and Arab and Persian advisors uh, on his staff, and his empire stretched across most of Asia. I got, I got a sense, I mean, I got maybe the feel of a few other films and television programs, particularly films, from the first episode. There's something that's quite reminiscent of The Matrix in there. Uh, there's also, uh, there's a lot of Last King of Scotland, if you've seen the film The Last King of Scotland, about the, I think, uh, medical student who ends up in the court, I suppose, the modern 20th century equivalent of a court, uh, of Idi Amin, the Ugandan uh, dictator during the 1970s and late 60s, I believe. There's a lot of that in, in the relationship between Kublai Khan and Marco Polo himself. There's also a great, I think, there's, there's a great point made that for many people, their perception, at least in the West, and especially in China, where the original Khan had killed about 50 million people, there's this perspective or this view of the Mongols as being these completely barbarous animals who just killed everyone in sight. And that was true, but at the same time, by the reign of Genghis Khan, or sorry, Kublai Khan, things had become a lot more sophisticated. Uh, they had infused, a little in a similar way that the Romans infused with regard to technology, they had infused culturally within themselves the aspects of many of the cultures that they had conquered and destroyed or taken over. And it become, as a result, very sophisticated, which kind of goes against the popular idea of what the Mongols were like. So there's a great mix of art styles and architecture in the court of the Khan himself. And the Mongols themselves, the cavalrymen, they look far far grander and far, far more um, luxuriant than they might have looked only three generations before when they were wearing mouse skin coats. Um, if you want to learn more about the Mongols, by the way, check out Dan Carlin's podcast, Wrath of the Cans, which you can probably find on iTunes uh, under Hardcore History. Fantastic program, or series of programs, series of podcasts. I like this episode very much. I'm very much looking forward to the other, I think, nine in the series. There are 10 episodes in all. It seems at the moment very promising. It seems like Netflix has once again uh, done it. They've made a a decent show, and it had to have had a, a quite a substantial budget. I believe it was shot in Italy itself, and there's some great shots of uh, uh, medieval Venice, which if you've ever played Assassin's Creed, uh, the second installment of the Assassin's Creed series, um, one of the few redeeming qualities of those games are, are the 
effort that 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 is the effort that Ubisoft tends to put into the environment. And you really get a feel for medieval Venice in this as well. There are a lot of horses being used, a lot of big establishing shots. It was shot in Italy, it was shot, I believe, in Malaysia in the Pinewood Studios there. It was also shot in Kazakhstan, um, which is a place which is very much a part of the Asian steppe, or the Eurasian steppe, where you get these plains and deserts and, you know, all the rest of it. So it was a fantastic first episode. Um, they also portray the Chinese uh, in the south who have not yet been conquered by the the great Khan. Um, they, 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 there's a very in-depth portrayal of them. Um, and if you're in, in the mood for something a little different, Game of Thrones is great. Um, Rome on HBO is great. Fantastic program. A lot of these historical dramas. This one's a little different. That's the thing that first uh, attracted me to it. That it, it covers a locale or set of locales and a time period and a story which everyone is kind of aware of but they don't know much about and i'm i'm one of them so check it out if you get a chance on netflix um i believe it comes in subtitled in four different languages english french spanish and uh, german Uh, and subtitles subtitle tracks in addition to that for all of those languages so check it out about an hour long 10 episodes was just released today um let me know what you think Uh, let me know what you thought of the show If you liked it, if you disliked it, leave a comment, um, like or dislike this video, I suppose. Subscribe to my channel. I may do more of these. As I said at the beginning, I'm not entirely sure what format future reviews of this program and its episodes will take. Whether I will have to put that little spoiler alert thing, which is very popular at the moment, right? To have the spoiler alert thing next to the video. I may do that. I may continue in this vein, trying not to give anything away. But I think if I do that, I will... Very quickly run out of things to talk about. Absent the plot, it becomes very difficult, you know. Fantastic show. Uh, very well made, you can tell just from looking at it. I mean, it's a, uh, clearly a very dedicated and professional crew behind it. Um, let me know what you think. Cheerio.